morning everyone welcome to the one day international webinar on shakespeare in bengali theater challenges and possibilities organized by the department of english shantal vidroho shardho shatobarshiki mahavidyalay let me begin with a few words on the theme of the webinar bengal had witnessed its cultural heydays during the 19th century and early 20th century with an aura of bengal renaissance rightly enough is kolkata called the cultural capital of india enjoying such pride of place in so far as cultural excellence is concerned bengal is very logically expected to have reaped the most plentiful and brilliant harvest in shakespeare studies or staging of his plays in the country the earliest recorded performance of a shakespeare's play in kolkata is othello at the calcutta theater in the christmas season of 1780 the first translation of shakespeare on the bengali professional stage was girish ghosh's macbeth the shakespearean presence in early modern drama ranges across a spectrum from close translation to more or less free adaptations and then via operational motifs elements and echoes to plays that may contain nothing authentically shakespearean so what are the challenges in producing shakespeare on bengal stage and how much possibilities are there in doing so these are the issues for today's webinar and to discuss this we have amongst us india's most distinguished resource persons our keynote speaker is professor vishnupriya dat professor school of arts and aesthetics jawaharlal nehru university new delhi our guest of honor is professor obhijit sen professor department of english and other modern european languages vishwavarti shantiniketan west bengal our invited speakers for this morning session are dr jolly dash associate professor and head department of english vidyasagar university west bengal and dr shumipendra banerji assistant professor department of english university of gorbongo today is the 27th death anniversary of great sri utpal dutt the illustrious bengali actor director and dramatist he has at least 16 shakespeare productions by his little theater group in the 1950s and 1960s we are organizing this webinar on this very day to pay our homage to this great theater personality now i would like to request our honorable principal dr montu kumar dash to welcome our esteemed speakers and inaugurate the webinar good morning everyone distinguished keynote speaker professor vishnu priyadat respected guest of honor professor obhijit sen honorable invited speaker dr jolly das and dr somipendra banerji and all the participants across the globe on behalf of santal vidroho sartho sadobarshiki mahavidyalay it's my privilege to welcome you all in this international webinar entitled shakespeare in bengali theater challenges and possibilities organized by the department of english of our college i extend my sincere gratitude to all the honorable speakers for accepting our invitation and providing us the rare opportunity of listening the address of eminent scholars and academicians like you as principal i proud to share with you some informations about our college since its inception in 2005 our institution is aiming at imparting quality education to the students from all sections of the society though young in age we set our vision very high almost 
all the departments are engaging themselves in arranging seminars, special lectures, workshops, conferences throughout the year. And our college is situated at the heart of Jungle Mahal of West Bengal. In spite of its remote geographical location and so many adverse cities, we try our level best to keep the students and faculties updated to achieve academic excellence and retain the glory of our college intact. The present pandemic situation may take some colors from our life, but it cannot put our spirit down. Taking inspiration from Charoi Bhati Mantra from Upanishad, we are determined to conquest fear and anxiety. Such academic activities could only be the elixir to keep us psychologically fit and morally upright. My heartfelt thanks go to the teachers of the Department of English for their endeavor, and I would like to congratulate them. Ben Johnson in his Neology says, Shakespeare was not of an age, but for all time. Such is the perennial appeal of this man that translates the barrier of time and space. So Shakespeare is relevant even in today's fast paced equivalent wall of destruction. And theoretical presentation of Shakespeare in Bengal is the topic of today's webinar. And I hope this will be an emerging discussion. And with these words, I declare the webinar open. Thank you all again. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your words. The keynote speaker of this webinar is Professor Vishnu Priya Dutt. Professor Vishnu Priya Dutt is a professor of theater and performance studies in the School of Arts and Aesthetics, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. Her area of research includes politics and theater, feminist readings of Indian theater, and contemporary performance practices and popular culture. Her recent publications include Gendered Citizenship, Performance and Manifestation, published by Palgrave Macmillan and Orient Black Swan in 2017, October Revolution, Equals of the Past, Lenin in Popular Sites and Theater, published in Studies in Theater and Performance, Volume 39, 2019, issue three. Protesting violence, feminist performance, activism in contemporary India, published in Performance Feminism and Effect in Neoliberal Times, published by Palgrave Macmillan in 2017. Professor Dutch has also led a number of international project collaborations with University of Warwick, Freie Universität Berlin, and University of Cologne. She is currently the Vice President of the International Federation for Theatre Research. Professor Dutt has been involved in active theatre in Kolkata since 1960s with the Little Theatre Group and later People's Little Theatre as a performance and directs. It is our extreme privilege to have her as the keynote speaker for this webinar. May I request Professor Vishnu Prata to kindly deliver her keynote address. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arup. I am the Odhukumashai, Professor um, Das, Arup, Shobhan. Today, I'm going to say that my father is going to be a father. If COVID-19, I'm going to say that I'm going to 
তার স্মরণে তার স্মৃতির উদ্দেশ্যে সেটা করতে পারিনি কিন্তু এই সুযোগটা আজকে বলার সুযোগ পাচ্ছি এটা আমার একটা নতুন গবেষণার একটা ছোট্ট অংশ এবং তাই আপনাদের কাছে পেশ করতে পেরে আমি কৃতজ্ঞ এবং এর ওপর প্রশ্ন ফিডব্যাক মতামত পেলে আমি খুব খুশি হব আমার রিসার্চ এতে অনেক লাভবান হবে তো আমি আমার শেয়ার স্ক্রিনটা অরূপ আমার শেয়ার স্ক্রিনটাকে দিয়ে দাও I would like to start with a, a collage of visuals from a landmark production of Othello, which spanned over more than 50 years, with hardly any differences to discern any change. Madam, the clip is playing, but we can't hear any sound. Okay, then let me... Akunashya? No, it's still not audible. Okay, let me just stop this here and go to the okay. next slide. These were uh, clips from, I'm sure a lot of you know these productions, but these are the details. The timeline is very critical as it marks the transition from pre-independence to post-independence and the first 50 years of Indian post-colonial theater practices. The productions resonate with English theater practices of post-war Europe, canonized and codified as a theatrical model, but also part of what Shamik Bandapadhyay says, the new Shakespeare demanded a reverence for the text, for close reading, analysis and understanding, and a consistent interpretation through dramatic action, conceived in terms of a total theater, that is theater as a balance of acting, sound and text, and its inherent values in perfect control over an ensemble of performers and technicians. What is significant in context of the larger theme of the seminar today, which is Shakespeare in Bengali theater, challenges and possibilities, that the Shakespeare productions, even after independence, retained its English character. And throughout this long span of it being in the repertoire, it continued to be performed mostly in English when it was subsequently translated in 1958 by the actor and director Utpal Dutt, it was a literal translation and the English style of theater was deliberately retained in rendering Shakespeare. In that context, how do we look at the new regional entity of the Bengali stage? Not merely as a theater spoken in one language, which is Bengali, but a critical regional political identity contesting the hegemonic nation formation during that time. In this presentation, I would like to focus on a college theater group, the amateur Shakespeareans, which started this journey with Othello and other Shakespeare plays, 
its conversion into little theater group, first as an English and then Bengali entity, and later People's Little Theater, but which played to full houses in Calcutta, Shakespeare, particularly Othello in English. Through the examples, I would like to unravel some of the anomalies of the post-colonial theater practices, the agonistic aspects which would create the foundation of political theater in India and question what I see as writing linear theater or cultural histories. The institutional spaces where Shakespeare theater practice was intricately woven into the curriculum and valorized in colonial Calcutta were the educational institutions, particularly the Jesuit schools and colleges, which were regarded as a nodal points of dissemination of colonial culture. At this point, I would like to look at the amateur Shakespeareans, a college theater society affiliated to the St. Xavier's College, performing extensively as a theater company in the auditorium of the college, a significant space of collaboration amongst a wide range of students coming from divergent backgrounds, who were elite Bengalis, Jews, Anglo-Indians, English, and actresses from outside the college who were exclusively non-Bengali. A very cosmopolitan group of young theater enthusiasts, the amateur Shakespeareans was inspired by the recent tour of the Shakespeareana, who had recently completed a stint in Calcutta with plays at the same college auditorium, each running for one week. Jeffrey Kendall, who ran the Sh Shakespeareana, to perform in these weekly runs, had recruited a few of the students from St. Xavier's College. And if you see the production, in it is the same genealogy which, you know, those clips were showing and what I'm talking about. So the amateur Shakespearean staged its first play, Othello, in July 1948. The review in the Statesman, in its accolades at the efforts of the students, particularly mentions Pratap Roy's Yago and Utpal Dats Othello. The final scene of Othello killing Desdemona is mentioned as the best acted scene in the play, but with a cursory mention of the actress playing Desdemona, Miss Joseph. While generally a positive review for the young theatre company, the drama critique gently admonishes it to focus on comedies rather than tragedies. And as you see, comedies were successfully produced. The Midsummer Night's Dream, Twelfth Night, but also Romeo and Juliet, and finally, Julius Caesar. By late 1949, or maybe early 1950, the dates are not very sure, the amateur Shakespeareana, after rena renaming themselves Cube, under whose banner they performed, the Distinguished Gathering changed their name into the Little Theatre Group. This was not merely an aesthetic or artistic decision, but as various writings of Utpaldat shows, an urgent need to respond to the critical issues of post-independent India with a political and agonistic criticality. The young actors believed that they had a more significant role to play in the new public spaces and public sphere, and also moving from subjects of a colonial power into citizens of an independent nation. The roles of the citizens were being redefined. I would in this context urge you to look at the cast list of the amateur Shakespeareans. And as a brochure of the play goes, pictures of the cast. So what do you see? What is most apparent and strikes you on the face? The multiracial composition, right? The presence of Jewish members in the ensemble was significant um, and unique. And their vision and experience of the Second World War allowed the Little Theatre Group and the Amateur Shakespeareana to adopt a wide anti-imperial principled position of the time. Common ideological dialogue stemmed from the historical experience of an anti-fascist and anti-imperial struggle with a desire to bring about larger changes in the new nation as active members of a civil society. 
the nomenclature of the little theater group was influenced by Harold Clorman's group theater and the choice of the play was Clifford Odette's Waiting for Lefty, also made famous by the group theater. The little theater group, along with Waiting for Lefty until the day I die, both Odette plays also produced Othello, Dark Lady of the Sonnets, Androcles and the Lion, and Merry Wives of Windsor, and Arms and the Man. The Merry Wives of Windsor was seen as an important production with Lawrence Olivia and Vivian Leigh sending the new group their good wishes. The leading newspapers of the time reviewed it with a statesman particularly effusive about the production. This was indeed a performance which whatever criticism could be offered of details showed an enviable sleekness of production and exuberance of execution. The result obviously of both experience and hard work and many signs of cultural intelligence. The Amrita Bazar Patrika wrote, the quality of the production in its entirety, it can be candidly acknowledged, was amazingly efficient and dexterous and it had an unmistakable stamp of superiority that is rarely to be expected of, far less associated with amateur productions. While you are discussing the actors, which includes, of course, both the actors and actresses, it's also important to point out that the actresses whose pictures you were seeing um, were not students of the St. Xavier's College. Sol Bekor, the enthusiastic co-organizer, was responsible for recruiting these actresses. Grace McCartick, coming from an Armenian family. Some of you may have seen her later. She played Rebecca in Michael Modushudun, which is Utpaldad's debut film, lived above the, uh, Saul Bekor's flat. Anne Kalenda, Seema Ezra, Caro Basil were friends of the family belonging to the Jewish community. Other actresses named in the plays and reviews were Joyce Bernard and Flora Moses. They were an integral part of the play and the group. And there is no really evidence to show that they were regarded as outsiders or there was any form of inequality. But beyond the mention of the actresses in the reviews and programs, we don't know much about them. The subsequent phase of the Little Theatre Group was complicated, with Utpaldat leaving the Little Theatre Group to join the Indian People's Theatre Association and engage in direct left cultural program. The Little Theatre Group continued with its production, such as Mrs. Warren's Profession, Macbeth, and Othello. Dutch writes about his short foray into the IPTA and his new doubts about the efficacy of the English theatre in Calcutta. I was a much disturbed person then, busy with useless English plays in Calcutta, fruitlessly exploring Shakespeare, Shaw, and Odette, and devastated by my distance from the people. I was filled with hatred for the way I had been brought up and refused to see the merits of Jesuitical education, which had opened up the world of books to me, including Marx and Engels, Rousseau and Voltaire, Hegel and Farbach. I considered myself a moron for being moved by Latin poetry and for being able to recite Virgil. I went about in quest of an identity. He interprets his own theater project of the English theater as a self-indulgent artistic exercise, which required urgent reprioritization. The political scientist, Nirja Gopal Jayal, sees that contestation is central to the defining of citizenship in each of the three core dimensions, as legal status, as a bundle of rights and entitlements, and as a form of identity. The negotiation and contestations around issues of identities always manifests in tendencies of inclusion and exclusion, with exclusion often assuming symbolic nature. It is not wrong, therefore, to assume that some members of the Little Theatre group, and particularly the actors from the other communities, would have been wary of the increasingly political confrontation of the group with the state. In an executive committee meeting, the matter was debated and voted 
with the majority going in favor of the transformation of the Little Theatre Group into primarily a Bengali entity. This can also be read as theatre, which would take up direct political critique of the state and the nation from the perspective of social justice and principles of a socialist and Marxist ideology. This position would have been very different from those of the multiracial communities. While DART was invested in social citizenship, urging for more equitable distribution of wealth, more inclusive in terms of class, caste, and even gender, the one category which would be now excluded from the imagination of the Little Theatre Group, and of course the nation, was the issue of race. Necha Gopal Jahal argues that race was a category which the Indian constitution never took to cognizance of, assuming that independence had resolved the racial, uh, racial issue. In the micro world of Little Theatre Group and its original composition, it may not have been so easy to set the marginalization of the race issues aside and continue as a collective entity. Dutt has talked about the day the resolution of making Little Theatre Group a group performing only in Bengali was taken and how the actors, particularly the actresses, accepted the verdict graciously and bid farewell with tears. Given the actors' background for them, the linguistic transition was equal to an end of the work in the theatre, surrendering probably the last space left for them where they felt they belonged. Most of them were monolingual, and whether joining a more political and interventionist little theatre group was a choice which many of them did not have. The actors made a sacrifice and accepted their marginalization from cultural spaces of post-independent India, which was a non-reversible cultural trend. Through the presentation, my intent has been to tease out these anomalies of history and ask that very vital question. How do we assess the contribution of the multiracial collaborator actors of a collective beyond what has come to be history of post-colonial theater written through individuals? It was to compile biographical materials around Utpaldat that the story of a collective vision were recovered, but as a result, always seen as subsidiary to Dutt's narrative. The sociocultural field in which the actors belong were unique and significant for their identity and status within their group. The colonial system had created complex racial hierarchies where Anglo-Indians, Jews, or Armenians enjoyed a number of privileges and higher social status vis-a-vis -vis the Indian counterparts. But a very impactful factor of the time, which we often ignore while we write this theatre history, was a large-scale migration of the Jewish community from Europe in the wake of the World Wars. The First World War had brought Saul Baker, who you can see in the visual with Utpaldat, a young Utpaldat, to India from Iraq. Turkey joining the Axis power in World War II resulted in an increase in the migration of the Jews from the part of the world to India. Apart from the influx coming from the Middle East, there were also a number of Jews migrating from Europe and opening cafes and restaurants along the entertainment localities in Calcutta. Bekhor talks about a safer heaven in colonial India and how they were taken into the homes of the local community. Bikhar also lived in an apartment which was number one Linsa Street of his father's tea and coffee trading company and says that most of the families from where he brought the actors and the musicians were known to him and belonged to his social circle. He mentions David Ezra, whose family owned a big house in the same neighborhood and who gave refuge particularly to the Greenbaum family who fled the Nazis from Germany. The large-scale migration created a larger pool of actor collaborators to be recruited from 
but also a more complex domain as far as these communities were concerned. The issues of race was not a priority for the Indian, new Indian nation or its administration, and the cosmopolitan nature of the group was a contrast to the cultural pressures of a celebratory nationalism which is strong indigenous and Hindu overtones. Julius Caesar, the last production of the amateur Shakespeareans, is the best possible case study to illustrate this. Julius Caesar was performed by the amateur Shakespeareans on 15th and 17th July 1949 at the St. Xavier's College Auditorium and was seen as the group's most successful adaptation and highly political for a school production. The handbill advertised Shakespeare for the first time in modern costume. And as a cast list indicated, the group was multiracial. A brochure painted for the show also uh, provided labels which identified Caesar as a dictator, Octavius Ma and Mark Antony and Lepidus as fascists, Brutus as socialist, and Cassius and Casca as communists. The play was set in fascist Italy under Mussolini. This was a significant dramaturgical intervention that combined a critical perspective on the Indian nation with international solidarity for the post-World War. Statesman of 17 July 1949, Lindsay Emerson writes a very raving and a positive review. The review describes that Caesar in hat and overcoat recalled the early Hitler. Antony, as a cross between Goebbels and Chirac, displayed a combination of unscrupulousness with sensitive intelligence. The reviewer, however, finds the portrayal of the conspirators as socialists and communists more questionable and very unconvincing. Yet, Dutch politics was becoming clearer, and the parable was apparent. Not to have Brutus and Antony on stage in the famous funeral scene to exhibit histrionic skills was a significant intervention in the play's climax, and Jamanjani Mukherjee has explained this a lot in detail in her work. The use of the radio as a prop was not only an auditory effect, but to introduce also, I think, a contemporary technological medium that had a very symbolic meaning. The Declaration of Indian Independence was not watched by most independent Indians, but heard on their radio sets. Subsequently, Dutt, for Shakespeare's Carter Centenary celebration in 1964, would do a Bengali version of Julius Caesar, but located in Nazi Germany, and the allusions to the new nation in 1964 was very clear. To this larger historical perspective, which had been part of the daily lives and existence, I'm also trying to draw attention to the disintegrating community structures of the non-Indians in colonial Calcutta. Their socio-cultural formations and institutions would have been disrupted in view of changes initiated by the independence. What theater historiography, which I study and teach, can offer, and I've tried to attempt through this essay, is what Tracy Davis would in trying to trace through theater practice the colossal efforts during colonialism to create a homogenized cultural project which often appropriated the others in their imagination. Davis writes, in terms of the popular fairy fairs of English pantomimes, a nation adamant about homogeneity where the repertoire and theatrical imagination provided a comforting fiction about the community. The major contribution of the amateur Shakespeareans and the Little Theatre Group to the emergence of post-independence Indian theatre in that sense was their refusal to be complicit in the colonial or the post-colonial derivative project of homogenization. By their very presence as a symbolic figure of an anachronistic colonial elite community and also representatives of the identity struggle as of Jews worldwide and other minorities, they challenged the new post-colonial theatre's tendency 
to valorize their own sense of nationhood. To end their stories, the social alienation at various such cultural sites would have been one of the reasons for a large exodus of these communities to the United Kingdom, Australia, or Israel. The key question I always wanted to ask, and this essay led me to it, did they find a sense of belonging once back into the homestead? Whether or not, or whenever we met them, I requested Bekhor to write about his tinted amateur Shakespeareans, he exhibited a strong sense of nostalgia, along with an eagerness to share his own personal archives from where a number of these historical sources are taken. Painstakingly, he has preserved the brochures of the plays, posters, and newspaper cuttings over the years and taken it with them when they packed and left the country for good. I have tried to flag the very perception of a cosmopolitan imagination at the moment of our independence and indicate towards a critical theater historiography. These disruptions and contradictions are more important than tracing any linear narratives of a micro history, particularly today when right wing repression and binaries of nationals and anti nationals are destroying the liberal and humanistic democratic foundations of the very nation which they had once challenged. Thank you. Uh, just to, you know, the video which we couldn't show at that moment, since I have still have a bit of time, maybe, um, I don't know if the sound is working now. Is it working? Is it audible? do it to be brief i will walk by i would not kill thy unprepared spirit no heaven forfend i would not kill thy soul oh you're kidding i i do and heaven have mercy on me amen for my heart and you say so i hope you will not kill me mm. But I fear you, for you are fatal then when your eyes are also. Why I should fear, I know. I know not. But yet I fear, I fear. There are loves I bear to you. Will you come to bed, my lord? Have you prayed tonight, Testimonia? I am, my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled as yet to heaven and grace, solicit for it straight. Alas, my lord, what do you mean by that? I'll do it. Be brief. I will walk by. I would not kill the unprepared spirit. No heaven for friend. I would not kill thy soul. Fuck you! Killing? May heaven have mercy on me. Amen with all my heart. If you say so, I hope you will not kill me. Mm. It is the cause. It is the cause, my soul. Have you not named it to you? Wakes. Who's there? What's hello? Hi, Desdemona. Will you come to bed, my lord? Have you prayed tonight, Desdemona? Aye, my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled as yet to heaven and grace, solicit for it straight. Alack, my lord. 
What do you mean by that? Well, do it. Be brief. I'll walk by. I would not kill the unprepared spirit. No, heaven for friend, I would not kill thy soul. Talk you of killing. Aye, I do. Ingenious college production. Um, uh, thank you, ma'am, for your enthralling speech. Uh, thank you, ma'am, you know, for your yeah. mesmerizing, enthralling, and insightful deliberation. I don't uh, so know well, how to accolade your presentation. It's just awesome, mind blowing. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, now it's the time yeah. to move on to our guest of honor, Professor uh, Ranjit uh, Sen. Though he needs no introduction. Yes, am I audible? You are. You are. Shobhan, you are audible. Sir, yes, am I audible, sir? Shobhan, you are audible. You are. Okay. Uh, though he needs no introduction, as he is very, he's a very well-known face to all of us, especially in the academic and theater circle. But for the sake of formality, I take this golden opportunity to introduce him. Hello. Okay. Um... Okay, I think uh, Shovan has lost the connection, so um, I would have the honor to introduce uh, Professor Vijit Shen. Uh, professor Vijit Shen is a professor of English at the Department of uh, Professor of English at the Department of English, Vishwabharati Shantiniketan. His chief areas of interest include Renaissance studies, theater studies, Tego studies. He has been the coordinator of the departmental SAP DRS program first phase with its thrust area at Rabindranath Chigo East-West Confluence. Apart from publishing in the areas of his interest, he has been the guest editor of Shongit Natok, volume 46, numbers 1 to 4, 2011. Special issue on Rabindranath's East-West encounters, performance, and visual arts published by Shangit Nakta Academy in New Delhi, 2013. He has been the co-editor of Rabindranath Tagore and the Nation, Essays in Politics, Society and Culture, published by Punas Kolkata and Vishwabharati in 2011. Uh, he is also the editor of Shakespeare's Macbeth, published by Pearson Langman, New Delhi in 2009. He has also done an English translation of Tagore's Tashid Desh as the Kingdom of Cards in Essential Tagore, uh, published by Harvard University Press, Cambridge in 2010. Professor Shen is actively engaged with the theater. He has worked with students and colleagues at, at Vishwabharati Shantinikatan, as well as with the theater troops in Kolkata. His productions include Shakespeare's The Merchant of Venice, uh, the Merry Wives of Windsor, Romeo and Juliet, The Wars of the Roses, A Midsummer Night's Dream, as well as Tegos, Bishorjon, Raja, and Tashet Desh. It is my privilege and honor to request Professor Vijit Shen to kindly speak at this webinar as the guest of honor. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Aru. Uh, first of all, I must uh, congratulate the organizers for arranging this kind of a webinar in these rather hard times of the pandemic when we need to meet online. But this gives us an opportunity even to 
get across to various uh, persons, scholars, whom otherwise we perhaps would not have met. Therefore, it is indeed also an honor and a privilege to share space with Professor Bishupriya Dutt, who just now gave a remarkable keynote address to this webinar. And it is a pleasure to share space with my two former students, uh, Jolly and Shomipendro. Uh, but uh, without any further ado, I think I'll move to my presentation itself, which is actually going to talk about Shakespeare in 19th century Bengali theater and the different manifestations of Shakespeare that emerged there. So in fact, I will be taking the history back from where Professor Vishupriya Dutt had actually started, which was post-independence. I will try and focus on the 19th century scenario because that is where Shakespeare was introduced in a very big way, both in English studies in Calcutta, it was Calcutta still, not Kolkata, and also in performance on the Bangla stage. Now, uh, I will try and talk about two samples of Shakespeare's manifestations. If possible, I will talk about a third if time permits. Now, the point is, uh, we all know from recent studies that have been doing the rounds that Shakespeare was certainly introduced into India by the British with a civilizing mission. This is not my term. This has been already used by the scholars. And the English Education Act, which came about in 1835 with Macaulay's famous or infamous minute. But one must also remember that even before Macaulay, even before the Viceroy, ben, uh, Viceroy was able to implement Macaulay's minutes into the English Education Act, there was already a group of about 20 Bangali Bhadralok, Bengali elite gentlemen, who had petitioned for an institution where Bengali students could get an English education. As a result of which, Hindu college came into being in 1817. We had people like Ramohan Roy, Darukanath Thakur, Radhakrishna Dev, and others among these petitioners. And Shakespeare came into the curriculum of Hindu college as early as in 1817. But obviously, in introducing Shakespeare, it was also introducing a problem. Obviously, Shakespeare is vastly admired. He is definitely great. But the fact remains, he is also the colonizer's supreme cultural icon. Therefore, how does one go about trying to do a kind of tightrope walking between these two? At the same time, one must remember that this is the time of the Bengal Renaissance, which has been historically called the Bengal Renaissance since certain quarters, which itself was informed by the raging debates between the Anglicists and the Orientalists, the reformists and the revivalists. Therefore, while the reformists were trying to bring in English education, I mentioned Ramohan Rai, who were trying to look up to Shakespeare with a lot of admiration, who would be a great Philip to the English education in India. It is also true that the revivalists were arguing in favor of the Indian modes of learning, both Sanskrit and Persian. Therefore, Bengal Renaissance was in fact informed by the contrary pulls of these two schools of thought. And all literary cultural articulations of the period have to be historicized within the context of this tussle that was taking place, even 19th century Bengali theater for that matter. Now, when we are talking about the 19th century Bengali theater, one needs to remember that this theater is a, a Western importation. It is something that is learned from the West. And B, it was urban. It was specially set in Calcutta. Therefore, when we are talking about the story of 19th century Bengali theater, we are in fact talking about theaters in Calcutta primarily. Mind you, the indigenous forms of entertainment were there. The 
Pachali, the Kathakata, the Jatra, but they were increasingly considered fit for the riffraff and the elites should have nothing to do with them. There were several writings, even in Bongo Darshan, for instance, there was an article trying to say that the Jatrawalas have reduced our gods and goddesses into Gualas and Gualinis, Radha and Krishna. Therefore, the Bhadralok should have nothing to do with them. Therefore, these indigenous forms of entertainment were being pushed into the margins. But mind you, they did not die out. They survived in the margins and they sometimes made their inroads into the, uh, the main uh, elite classes. I mean, uh, I, I will pick up the example of the Tagore family, for instance. In Jorashako Thakurbari, there was a Jorashako Natushala, which was very much a proscenium theater built according to the model of the Western British kind. But then the Jatrawalas were also being invited to the Thakurbari to perform. Therefore, the Thakur Puribar, the family of the Tagores, which had remained as the front runners in the Bengal Renaissance movement, were very much also informed by this duality, even in their practices of theater. So when one is talking about the theaters in Kolkata built by the locals, we, of course, must remember Lebedov, his Bengali theater, but then Lebedov was a Russian, not really a local. But then the fact is that he did bring into Kolkata the Bangla theater, Kalponik Shambhadon. The first local to build a thit theater was, of course, Prashanna Kumar Thakur in 1831, his Hindu theater. And then the rest followed, Nobin Chandra Boshu, Ashutosh Dev, so on and so forth. But mind you, that reformist revivalist debate, which I talked about, spilled into the theater itself. Therefore, on the one hand, you had people looking up to Shakespeare, trying to translate Shakespeare, trying to adapt Shakespeare. On the other, there was the other group who were trying to hold up Kalidash as an equally important cultural icon of India. Therefore, this Shakespeare Kalidash debate became again a very important debate of the times. There were, in fact, several translations, adaptations of Shankshuto Natuk and even what I would say quasi Shankshuto Natuk. I mean, there are no actual Sanskrit antecedents of plays like Rama Bhishek Natuk or Shabitri Shottoban Natuk. These were kind of quasi uh, Sanskrit plays taking on from what had been offered by Kalidash or Shudrak and so on and so forth. Very interesting is the case of Modushudan Dotto, because in Modushudan, we have the importation of a Western tragic structure with the use of an Indian narrative generally borrowed from Mahabharat or some such Indian source. I have in mind his first tragic play, Shormishta, 1859. Therefore, what Modushudan is trying to do is a case of transculturation. He is trying to establish a kind of a cultural dialogue between the two cultures. But since we are talking about Shakespeare, I think it is important also to remember that Modushudan did not translate Shakespeare. This is, in fact, what he wrote to Rajnarayan Boshu, his friend, in a letter. And I quote, some of my friends, and I fancy you are among them, as soon as you see a drama of mine, begin to apply the canons of criticism that have been given forth by the masterpieces of William Shakespeare. They perhaps forget that I write under different circumstances. Our social and moral developments are of a different character. The Fumotushudan is acutely aware of the different socio-cultural moorings, and he did not venture into any kind of Shakespearean adaptation. But then Shakespeare was being adapted, Shakespeare was being translated, and there were varied, varied kinds of approaches being taken vis-a-vis -vis Shakespeare. There was imitation, there was appropriation, there was, for that matter, even contestation and confrontation. Now, keeping that in mind, let me actually take up the two samples that I was promising. One is 
the case of Bush of Charun Addo, which many of you are familiar with, in 1848, he was the black Othello with the rest of an all white cast, where the Othello was given under the direction of James Barry at the Sasusi Theatre. Obviously, there were divergent responses to this production. The Bengali dailies were all praise. Therefore, uh, uh, they found in this Othello a native actor, Babu Boishop Chararadho, pleased everybody with his verbal and gestural enactment of Othello, showing no signs of either fear or slackness, so on and so forth. The English reviews were sometimes patronizing. His delivery was somewhat cramped, but under all circumstances, his pronunciation of English was for a native remarkably good. Sometimes the English Davies were more openly critical, I quote, of the call of the last act, we cannot conscientiously speak so well. In the beautiful soliloquy, it is the cause, it is the cause, my soul. The actor was scarcely audible. And when there was praise, it came somewhat grudgingly. And I quote again, taking it as a whole, we consider the performance wonderful for a native. But the fact remains that with Bushtuk Charun Addo, it was certainly an instance of colonial mimicry. Black skin trying to put on the white mask. Though in recent scholarship, there has been an attempt to problematize this event even further beyond the simple binary of the colonized colonizer equation. It has been seen as an early instance of the of an example of ethnic correctness of cultural representation. Or sometimes even the white mask of the Bengali actor, and I quote Jostha Singh here, enacted his difference from the white world, both in fictional Venice and in colonial India. Thus, instead of being appropriated by the colonial sahib's playtext, the Indian actor revealed the ambivalence of its cultural authority through a native strategy, perhaps best described by Homi Baba as a camouflage, mimicry, black skin, white masks. This is just a saying in her different Shakespeare's. The fact is, one is not sure whether Bishop Chaudhanato was very deliberately using this native strategy. But the one remains rather surprised by the total silence of the actor's colored body as a text, negotiating the white female body, particularly of the lead actress. There is nothing said about this. By contrast, I would, I would ask you to remember what Paul Robeson, when he was playing to Peggy Ashcroft's Desdemona had this to say. For the first two, two weeks I played with Desdemona, that girl couldn't get near me. I was backing away from her all the time. I was like a plantation hand in the parlor, that clumsy. So this was the kind of attitude of Paul Robeson towards Peggy Ashcroft, but we have nothing on record regarding Bushnuk Chorinado's negotiation with the uh, white actress, particularly the actress playing Desdemona, the daughter of Esther Leach. Uh, but of course, the colonial authorities were not very comfortable with this event that was to happen. And in fact, whole Calcutta was simply agog with this event to happen when it was advertised, particularly De Rosio's Young Bengal. So with this tremendous amount of expectation in Calcutta, the authorities were sensing trouble. As a result of which, the first performance scheduled for 10th August was canceled at the very last moment. At 6.30 PM, orders came from the military cantonment of Dundam, passed by the brigadier of the cantonment, which prohibited the army personnel of the caste to play in this performance. And the army personnel included the players of Iago 
Brabantio and Emilia. Now, if you do not have Iago, Brabantio and Emilia, you cannot have the Othello performance. Therefore, the performance had to be cancelled. Now, James Barry, the director, of course, was extremely resourceful. He quickly found replacements and the performance ultimately happened on 17th August. After that, of course, Bushup Charod Addo literally goes out of record. We almost get to hear nothing of Bushup Charod Addo's later career in theater. Now, let me take on the second example I have in mind, and that is not so much about performance, but about an adaptation or appropriation. In fact, the first such Bangla appropriation of Shakespeare, that is Horo Chandra Ghosh's Bhanumutti Chitto Vilash, which was published in 1853, but probably written in 1852, because the preface is dated 1852. This, as I said, is the first specimen of a Bangla translation, adaptation, appropriation, Indianization of Shakespeare. And as such, it kind of sets the parameters for the future cultural repositioning of Shakespeare in Bengal, maybe in India. Now, Horachandra had been a student of Hindu college and he had won accolades for his translation of Hume's essay on the dignity and meanness of human nature when he was a student. And the examiner, John Clark, had very much commended the effort. Probably armed with that, Horachandra went on to translate Merchant of Venice. First, he started out with a lot of fidelity to the Shakespeare text. In fact, he was probably uh, urged to do this translation by an European gentleman who wanted Shakespeare to be translated for native Indian consumption. So this is what he said in that Bangla preface. Merchant of Venice using that very, very difficult Bangla that he has used there. But uh, incidentally, the preface is given in Bangla and is also given in English. And in that preface, we ultimately get to know that though it started out with a lot of fidelity for the Shakespeare original, ultimately he changed track on the advice of some of his Indian friends who said that if he was wanting Shakespeare to be accepted by his Bangla readers, then Shakespeare has to be Indianized. So uh, this is what I'm reading from the English preface. Some of my learned friends having surmised that my performance was not likely to be popular unless the mode in which it was done was altered. I took their advice and undertook to write it in the shape of a Bengali Natuk or drama, taking only the plot and underplots of the Merchant of Venice with considerable additions and alterations to suit the native taste. The sort of reception of my Natuk is to meet with from the public, I can by no means divine or guess at, the work being of a novel character, professing as it does to be a Bengali Natuk, though written much after the manner of an English play. Therefore, Shakespeare as a Bangla Natuk, this is what Horachandro was trying to do. Now, in Horochandro's experiment, he was therefore continuously moving back and forth between the cultural registers of the source play and the target audience or reader. So what does he do? He uses the allegory of a quasi-Indian story. He renames the dramatic locales. Therefore, Venice becomes Gujarat which is traditionally associated with trade and commerce in India. Belmont, the seat of love, becomes Ujjoini. Ujjoini, again, with its rich cultural, cultural heritage vis-a-vis -vis the uh, legends associated with Bikramaditya or Kalidash. 
Incidentally, the discourse of racial or religious hostility entirely disappears. But the Indian counterparts of Shylock, that is Lokhapati Rai, and Antonio, that is Charudatto, remain locked only in professional rivalry. Therefore, that very important element of racial or religious uh, dichotomy and hostility is totally done away with. Again, because in Indian conditions, it was almost unthinkable that a woman would arrange for her own suitable match, uh, perhaps maybe according to the will of a dead father, but without any parents, a woman arranging for her own match, unthinkable in 19th century Bangla conditions. Therefore, Horuchandru's Porsche, that is Bhanumoti, has her parents still living, the king and queen of Ujjaini. And it is under their supervision that a Shalamba Shaba is arranged, and there Chittobilash, the Indian Basanio, gets to choose the correct casket, Shamput, and wins Bhanumoti in marriage. Very interestingly, immediately after the marriage, the king and the queen disappear from the play. They ostensibly go on a pilgrimage. And therefore, it becomes convenient for Bhanumoti and her companion Shushila to dress as males, Nobin Shastri, the young lawyer, and to enter the male domain of law in Gujarat. This is following the original story. In fact, she even dupes Chittobilash and takes away the wedding ring from him, as in the original. And as in the original, later she makes this an occasion to rail at him for infidelity. Now, this, therefore, is a kind of a hybrid text that Horachandra Ghosh comes up with. This is, mind you, not of a very high literary standard, but it merits attention because it sets the parameters for this kind of hybridity to come into play in the subsequent translations appropriations. You see, a translator or an adapter, for that matter, even an actor or a director, working in a colonial or a post-colonial position has to realize that Shakespeare is not really his contemporary. So Shakespeare has to be made his or her contemporary by relocating Shakespeare in the new space of the colonial post-colonial reception. Therefore, the 16th century English text of Shakespeare has to be overlaid with the colonial post-colonial connotations to make it conducive for articulations in this new relocated space of reception. This is, in fact, what Horachandra is trying to do. And this is exactly what other plays, other subsequent translations, associations of uh, Shakespeare have done in 19th century. Therefore, uh, there, have been, there have been attempts to make Shakespeare very strange. Now, it might again be argued that this very process of making strange, in fact, might it itself be a way of contesting the authority of Shakespeare. The colonizer in foisting Shakespeare upon us has loaded Shakespeare with a kind of supreme cultural uh, hegemonical role. In a way, we in the colonial, post-colonial situation, I mean, when, when I mean we, I'm, I'm speaking for somebody like Horachandra Ghosh, when we are stripping Shakespeare of those associations and making him strange, are we, in a way, contesting with that hegemonic control of Shakespeare, which the colonizer wanted to bring upon us? Therefore, there is a simultaneous attempt to adopt and deny Shakespeare, to go back to him and again to redress him. 
to relocate him. Therefore, in a way, Horochandra Ghosh's Bhanumoti Chitto Bilash is and is not Shakespeare. Uh, in this point, in this uh, at this point, I think I I also need to mention that particularly when we are going in for performances, one has to remember, for that matter, even for readership, in India, in a place like India, this could this could well apply for other third world situations also. We would have two categories of readers or audiences: one who have read their Shakespeare's the other who have not read their Shakespeare's. The, the first category would probably continuously be trying to relate the play at hand with the Shakespeare they have at the back of their minds. And they're continuously making comparisons. The other group who have not read their Shakespeare's would be taking this text as the original text whether on the page or whether on the stage. And therefore, they would be grappling with that text without that hegemonic control of a colonizer imposed Shakespeare. So the remaining uh, versions of Shakespeare that were happening in uh, in. 19th century Bengal, after Horachandra had set the parameters, would be like Merchant of Venice done as Prabhavati or again Shurulata Natuk, Romeo and Juliet done as Charumukhi Chittohara or Bashantu Kumari or Ajay Shingho Bilashputi Natuk, Cymbeline done as Kushum Kumari, Macbeth as Rudrapal, Hamlet as Hori Raj, and of course a text which appeared almost close to Horachandra's text was Tarachalun Shikdar's Bhadra Arjun or Jisi Gupto's Kirti Bilash. Now, since I have a, just a bit of time, let me talk about that third sample I had in mind in brief, and that is Girish Chandra Ghosh's Macbeth. Now, Girish Chandra Ghosh's Macbeth was, of course, certainly the very best specimen of Shakespeare translations in 19th century. And it was also exceptional in that the translator tried to remain faithful to the original Shakespeare text rather than follow this accepted convention of Indianizing Shakespeare. Now, when it opened at the Minerva Theatre, uh, the grand announcement at the Omrita Bajar Putrik on 28th January 1893 said, Shakespeare in Bengal, Macbeth, I have got the piece mounted by European artists and dressed it under European supervision and makeup by Mr. J. Pim, signed G.C. Ghosh, Girish Chandra, as the manager. Now, therefore, Girish Chandra was actually taking the help of English slash European specialists for the stage decor, the costumes, the makeup of this performance. And the English reviews were very, very uh, appreciative of his efforts. This is what the Englishman had to say. A Bengali tale of Kader is a lively suggestion of incongruity, but the reality is an astonishing reproduction of the standard convention of the English stage. Uh, but the fact is, Girish Chandra also, remembering what was happening in contemporary Beng Bangla theater, he also tried to bring in some local color. Therefore, though he remained in the main faithful to the original text, he tried to he tried to infuse some amount of local color. He brought in a Nandi in the Shankshita style at the start of the play. He was liberally punctuating the play with songs and dances, recalling contemporary stage practices. But in spite of all these laborious efforts of Girish Chandra, and of course, his indisputable talent, both as actor and playwright, the production failed miserably at the box office. In fact, Girish Chandra himself is known to have confessed when Macbeth was acted at the Minerva, the hall was virtually empty after the first 
few performances. A spectator who attended one of the early shows said to me, Sir, I have been seeing plays for nearly 10 years, but I have never been so badly cheated. He, in fact, tried to revive it again on 28 November 1899 at the Classic Theatre with a lead role played by Amurindra Dotto, who was by that time famous for his uh, representation of Hamlet as Horiraj, but again it failed. And that, of course, put an end to Girish Ghosh's plans to translate Hamlet, Othello, and King Lear, unfortunately. Now, to try and understand Girish Chandra Ghosh's failure on the one hand, and the subsequent invisibility of Bhushab Chandranaddo on the other, I think one would have to ultimately acknowledge that it was Horachandra Ghosh's cultural relocation that became the archetype and prototype of the face of 19th century Bangla Shakespeare. Therefore, the colonial mimicry of Bhushab Charun and the lingual transposition of Girish Chandra both disappeared with the cultural repositioning of Bhanumuti Chittu Bilash ultimately gaining ground. This ultimately was providing a new model for Shakespeare repositioning in 19th century Bengal. In a way, one would suggest uh, Bengal or Bengali theatre was also trying to forge its own identity, trying to grow more and more nationalist with Modushudan Shorvishta, Modushudan's uh, farces, and then Dinobundhu's Dildarpun, and then, of course, the formation of the National Theatre in 1872. And there is this very nationalist Bangali Shakespeare, which therefore comes into being. The kind of identity, a Bangali identity, is given to Shakespeare, which comes in handy. With that, I'll end my presentation here. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, uh, for such an illuminating and enriching experience. Uh, we are really grateful uh, to listen to your talk. And you spoke about the different manifestations of Shakespeare in 19th century Bengali theater. We have some questions, but because of the constraint of time, I would like to take uh, one or two questions. I shall put the question on the screen and uh, kindly, sir, you may reply the question. Uh, about this particular point about Sasu C, as you know, uh, the lady who was uh, promoting Sasu C, uh, in fact, plays were being given in English in particular. Sasu C was one of the many theatres which were there in Kolkata at that point of time, where English productions of Shakespeare were being done, mainly for the entertainment of the English residents of Kolkata. Uh, I am not right now able to produce all the details about the other different productions, but Sasusi uh, was one of the very important theatres there at that point of time, which ultimately burnt up. And uh, therefore, these were very many other different theatres which were there. Uh, providing entertainment mainly to the English residents. The Bengali elites were probably visiting some of these, which gave them the idea of building their own theatres. As I said, Prashanna Kumar Thakur ultimately comes up with Hindu theatre, which is an emulation of the kind of theatres which were there on Lal Baja Street or on Theatre Road, or for that matter, the Sasuji Theatre. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, I have another question from Rongit Shinigutto. Okay. Uh, 
Well, you see, uh, the caste dimension was not made immediately available. The fact is, the uh, Bushnok Charan Ardu as an what was advertised unpainted nigger going on to do Othello. This was what was being promoted. And this was something that was extremely uh, enthusiastically taken up by Derosio's young Bengal followers. Therefore, uh, I wouldn't be so much aware of the caste dimension coming in in a very big way. Though, yes, as I, as I realized, Darukanath was, in a way, uh, financing Sansusi. Uh, and, and was was aware of Esther Leach, but uh, this was mainly a production by James Barry. James Barry, who had inducted uh, Bushok Charanadho into the, uh, into the uh, production. For that matter, may I just mention, I mean, it has been found that much later, Bushok Charun had uh, been associated with uh, Thakur Das Chakraborty, Jadup Charun Palit, Potit Parun Shen, Madhup Chandradhara, and Ganga Charun Shen to establish what was the Calcutta Training School at Shankar Ghosh Lane, with which Bidda Shagur himself had later associated himself. Therefore, uh, at least in the 1848 performance, or even in his uh, actually joining hands with these other Bengali elites to form the Calcutta Training School, I think the caste element did not come into play in a very big way. Thank you. Uh, this actually uh, takes beyond the actual scope of my paper, since I was mainly talking about the Shakespeare in Bengal. But uh, you see, the idea of Garrick is something that keeps coming back even in 19th century Bengali theater. We know Girish Ghosh was continuously being uh, held up as Garrick. Uh, but at the same time, one must remember the theater troops which were touring Bengal at this point of time were not the theater troops of the first class rate. This is something that Shobik Bantopadhyay has also pointed out. I mean, they would not afford so much time spending on a sea voyage to come to the colonies and perform when they were so much more in demand in British Isles itself. Therefore, it was not the first class companies not even the second class companies, maybe the third class companies were touring the colonies with their productions at this point of time. We did have visits from some of these in uh, even in Kolkata at that point of time. But uh, I mean, appropriation of Garrick and uh, in, in that way, coming in into the uh, into uh, into Bangla theater itself. But the English troops were, of course, playing at the new playhouse or the old playhouse of Lal Bajar or Theatre Road, mainly for the English residents. Thank you. Uh, the women characters uh, in 19th century Bengali theatre well, they mainly came from not the Bhadralok class. They came from a particular area, primarily from the red light districts. And uh, they made name for themselves on the Calcutta stage. Therefore, for instance, Tin Kori Dashi went on to play uh, Lady Macbeth with uh, Girish Chandra. Uh, but uh, in incidentally, it is interesting. This relates also to uh, the earlier question. There was a there was a 
comment made in the dailies that the Lady Macbeth of Girish Chandra Ghosh's performance had a Mrs. Siddons like appearance. Therefore, uh, somewhere probably a very studied approach to the portrayal was being done. Uh, but uh, in fact, the women characters, not only in Shakespeare productions, but even in other productions, in Bangla language productions, were being played by women from these other red light districts. Therefore, uh, they were actually looked down upon by the Bhadra Shamaj and yet being so much uh, a, a, a commodity for entertainment on the stage itself. Is that it? Thank you so much, sir, for uh, replying all these questions. Because of the limitation of time, we cannot yes, take all yeah. the questions, sir. Yeah. Uh, and I shall, uh, if you consent, if you give a consent, then I can kindly, I please can uh, forward these questions to you. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, thank you, sir, for joining uh, this webinar. And it was uh, really a nice experience and illuminating one to listen to uh, your illuminating speech. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Our next uh, speaker uh, for this uh, webinar is Dr. Jolly Dash. Uh, Dr. Dash is uh, an associate professor and head department of English with the Southern University with the board. Uh, she has done her PhD from Rabindra Bharati University, Kolkata under the supervision of Professor Shubha Sharkar uh, on the theme of quest in TSADX plays. She has also completed a UGC sponsored minor research project on the past present interface in Girish Karnad's plays. Dr. Dash is associated with numerous academic institutions of India. Her monographs include Eliot's prismatic plays, a multifaceted quest published by Atlantic New Delhi in 2007, tracing Turner's theatrical trajectory and integrated approach to his life and creativity, published by Paragon New Delhi in 2015, ethnic tapestry, Bengali short stories on indigenous people, published by Department of Oriya Vishwabharati, Shanti Nikatan Center of Excellence in 2019. Besides other publications and, and articles in journals and chapters in, in volumes on the national and international levels. Dr. Dash's areas of academic interest are T.S. Eliot's works, Girish Karnad's works in English, translation from Bengali to English and vice versa, and indigenous people, especially the Kheria and Kheria Shabur people. She has participated in various international and national level seminars, conferences, workshops as delegate and resource person. It is our privilege to have Dr. Jolly Dash as our invited speaker. Now may I request Dr. Dash to kindly give her talk. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You, you are. Uh, good afternoon to all present on this virtual platform. Uh, before I begin my discussion, I would like to express my gratitude to the organizers of this international webinar on Shakespeare in Bengali theater, challenges and possibilities for inviting me to be here with eminent persons who are knowledgeable in this area. I thank Oru for a generous introduction. I also thank Dr. Montu Kumar Dash, Principal, Shantan Vidroho Sardho Satpachiki Mohabidaloy, Boaltor, Koschi Medinipur, and the teachers in the Department of English, Mr. Arup Ratan Chakraborty, Head of the Department, and Mr. Shobhan Maiti, for inviting me. Arup and Shobhan are very dear colleagues also. I am very glad to share this session with Professor Vishnu Priyadotto whose keynote address shall be an important asset
for students as well as scholars. Professor Obijit Chen is my teacher, as he has already said. His erudition matched by his attractive mode of sharing his thoughts has always made me look forward to his lectures. I am still your pupil, sir. Dr. Shomi Pendra Bandopadhyay has shared an interesting session on T.S. Eliot with me at Lalbagh College, Murshidabad. The significance of today's webinar owes much to the inclusion of its theme in the postgraduate syllabus of Vidya Shagor University, to which SBSS Mohabiddaloy is affiliated. In one of the courses offered in the first in the second semester, namely Shakespeare, we have a unit, Subcontinental Responses to Shakespeare, where the state responses in Bengali are generally discussed with the students. Therefore, this webinar shall be exceptionally useful for the learners, especially those who have an inclination towards theatrical performance. My discussion shall primarily address these students. Uh, I would humbly like to dedicate my discussion to Sri Utpal Dotto, who passed away on the 19th of August, 1993. My discussion shall more or less be uh, divided into an introduction. Then there will be an overview on the challenges and possibilities of manifestations of Shakespeare's plays in Bengali theater. The time span is pretty long during the last century and the present one. I shall then refer to a few performances, the selection of which has depended solely on the information I have at my disposal during these troubled times when one cannot move out of one's home. So this selection is completely based on the few productions I have been able to see number one, live, number two, on the YouTube channel, and number three, have come to learn about from various sources like reviews, interviews, and other forms of documentation for which I am very grateful to all the concerned internet archives. Finally, there will be a very brief conclusion. So I begin. Whenever I am asked, who is the playwright who has influenced you the most? I say Shakespeare. This remark was made during an interview by Girish Karnad, eminent playwright in Kannada and English. It may be said that all leading Indian theatre persons have been well versed or at least interested in Shakespeare. Professor Shen has spoken on the different manifestations of Shakespeare in 19th century Bengali theater. I propose to continue from there and look at a few interesting issues. The 20th century has borne witness to unprecedented human experiences. A couple of world wars, globalization, various brands of socialism, changes in the economic world, consumerism, developments in information technology, besides other involvements of technology in almost all spheres of life in a big way. For the Bengali theater, these elements have inevitably played their parts in its shaping, added to which was the post-colonial exposure and experience, especially in the early part of the 20th century. Much of this has been discussed by Professor Dutt and Professor Shin. The convergence of multiple experiences on the mind at a rapid rate called for equally matching reflections in art, including performance in theatrical space. Theatrical performance, having its unique qualities, is something which is made and unmade with the audience as witness. As a performance progresses, the play is made. When it ends, the very similitude ends too. The play is unmade. Therefore, it is this brief life which struts and frets upon the stage and then is heard no more, which gives the intensity to a performance. However, the strains reverberate. And depending on the impact the play has on the individual auditor, 
this reverberation continues for long. Nostalgia is sometimes generated by milestone performances like football doctors Choitali Rater Shopno, his Othello, among others. When Shakespeare's plays arrive in the Bengali theatrical space, as Sir has said, there is an expectation in the auditor. Questions like how faithful is the performance to the original or whether the actor has been able to surpass a former memorable performance in the same role by someone else who may be a legendary actor definitely arise. Now I shall focus on the commercial Bengali theatre for lack of time a major endeavours shall be kept outside this discussion and Madam has dealt with some of them. When we consider the challenges and possibilities of Bengali stage performances of Shakespeare, it must be emphasized that the live performance has some aspects which we must keep in mind. For example, the most important challenge or possibility is the stage itself, the acting space, which is not a dead structure. It is dormant, waiting, ready for a performance. It offers to the director, the actor, the musician, the technician, the set designer, and the audience, both challenges and prospects which are opened up before them, especially for the actor. The role itself, the co-stars, the director's role, the technical support, and of course, the audience response. All these converge to challenge the actor's inherent ability and preparation inviting the actor to bring out the best on the one hand, simultaneously offering possibilities of bettering previous performances in the same role made by the actor himself or herself. Not two performances of the same play could be exactly the same for obvious reasons. Therefore, we may simplify the idea by putting it in this way. Challenges and possibilities for theater are Janus faced. The challenges are looked back at and possibilities are looked forward to when a performance takes place. For a Shakespeare play's manifestation, the challenges and possibilities are possibly more than those in the case of other playwrights. One reason is that he has been the source for more performances across the globe since quite a long time. Another more important reason has been pointed out by noted theatre critic Shomik Bondopadhyay when he says in an interview, and I quote, Performatively, Shakespeare does pose challenges, but I think the problem is that of seeing or reading Shakespeare in his history. That history is lost, so you have to reclaim it, as Sir has said. Reposition Shakespeare in that history and then relate it to your own history. That's a different kind of program. And, Shomik Babu points out, a lot of hard work. By way of a simple example, I shall refer to Choitali Ratet Shopna. This time-tested Bengali rendering of A Midsummer Night's Dream by Utpal Dokto has been the staple for many a performance. In his own production, the first performance of which was possibly on the 27th of April 1964, it was a success. Obundi Chakraborty directed the same play with a contemporary look nearly 50 years later, and it was a success. Dr. Torun Kumar Pradhan has directed Bhagunda Ter Goppo, initially basing the play on Utpal Babu's text, but including many forms of folk theatre, and it is also a success. These are three different ways of looking at the same Shakespearean play by three directors of Bengali theatre who have based their plays on the same Bengali rendering. Now, you must have noticed that I have used the term success for all three productions, which points towards the fact that theatre is live performance directly related to audience response, depending completely on it. Therefore, the first consideration for preparing a production is the audience acceptance, its guarantee. A text which will guarantee this shall be considered. Thus, 
adaptations are usually better suited simply for their flexibility. And as Sir has pointed out, Bhanumati Chittabilash is a case uh, in point. Now, adaptations are usually better suited simply for their flexibility. Then follow the available cast, music, sound, light, design, and other supports. Here, it shall be pertinent to reiterate what Shomik Babu has said about Girish Ghosh in order to illustrate the kind of dedication that a theatrical performance of Shakespeare calls for, in spite of the failure of Macbeth. So, I quote from Shomik Babu, Girish Ghosh didn't have an academic education at all. So, he had to study, labor, and understand everything on his own. He also read a lot of actors' memoirs, actors' biographies. He used to read a lot of those. And it is from there that he found out how people had acted for Shakespeare. And he used those for his productions as well. I unquote. But ever since actors have become freelance, in comparison to what Shomik Babu has said about Girish Ghosh, the permutations and combinations have become more flexible and better than in the days when actors were a part of specific groups or companies. Nowadays, however, with freelance actors having busy schedules elsewhere, there's nearly no time for full-fledged, very uh, uh, rigorous rehearsals always. So compromises with the kind of dedication Girish Ghosh could afford are inevitable. So that is one challenge. With this comes in yet another aspect to be considered. In a radio interview, Utpal Dutt had pointed out that an actor ought to be able to deliver blank verse, preferably Shakespeare's, as part of his or her training. He thought that in this matter, Girish Ghosh's Bengali rendering of Shakespeare's plays are indispensable. Thus, his translation speaks volumes about his approach to the original text, about which Sir has also said. The approach to Shakespeare's text is therefore very significant. To do a Shakespeare is a dream for many a director and actor. There are challenges and possibilities inherent in such a dream. The play ideally could be such that the auditor, as Sir has said, who is familiar with Shakespeare and the one who isn't, both kinds of persons must be equally comfortable with the play in progress. About the on-stage crew, Shomik Bandabarthai has an interesting observation. He says, I suddenly realized eight, ten years ago, and he is speaking in 2019, of so many, literally thousands of people doing theater in Bengal, how many have read a single Shakespeare play? Probably not even a fair percent. The problem, according to Mandapartai, was the unavailability of interesting play texts in Bengali. So he went ahead and published, that is in the recent past. So we went ahead and published Uttal Dutto's translation of Macbeth and included the scenes Dutto had left out by way of Olokron Jom Dajgupto's translation. Therefore, to begin with the choice of text, which play, tragedy or comedy, which text in Bengali, is it available, will it suffice, does it need to be reworked, the permission of the translator, the ease of the actor, the director's role, all these are issues which require consideration. I may mention here that the adaptations are more flexible and can accommodate a lot of immediately relevant issues within the essential framework of a Shakespearean play. Nowadays, we find the tendency for resorting to adaptations is increasing. The nature of the production is also very important. Now, let us take a brief look at a few 20th and 21st century stage productions of Shakespeare's plays in Bengali translations and adaptations. The selection, as I told you already, is random with the purpose of upholding the overall impact of these performances. 
I had initially considered referring to Bengali theatrical performances of Shakespeare's plays on either side of the partition, but that is outrageous. And Madam Isha Yusuf shall speak about Shakespeare in Bangladesh. So I shall limit myself to this side of the border. In the late 19th and 20th century Bengali theatre, Girish Ghosh, D.L. Roy, and Devaprasad Bhita Bimad were also dealing with history plays like Henry IV and Richard III, possibly because of their canonical status or for the dynastic struggles and tyranny they reflected, which was very relevant during that period of the Raj. On the 5th of September, 1914, Cleopatra, a translation of Antony and Cleopatra by Promothonath Bhattacharya was performed at the Minarva Theatre. In December 1915, Shaudagar, an adaptation of The Merchant of Venice by Bhupendranath Bhattacharya, was performed in the Star Theatre. In March 1919, Othello, translated by Devendranath Basu, was staged in the Minarva Theatre. And on 19th June 1920, Kuhoki, an adaptation of A Midsummer Night's Dream by Devin Ronad Basu was performed at the Star Theatre. Selected scenes from Girish Ghosh's Macbeth were performed in September 1926 at Star Theatre and in February 1945 at Ron Mohan. Then there seems to be a lull as far as remarkable productions are concerned until we come to Utpal Dutt. When he was 18, 1947, he established the Shakespeareans. And because Madam has already discussed in detail this phase of uh, the Bangla productions of Shakespeare, I shall skip over to the texts which Utpal Babu found satisfactory for performances of Shakespearean plays in Bangla. The texts he used were like this, The Merchant of Venice by Shunin Chattopadhyay, Macbeth by Jyotindranath Shengupta, Twelfth Night by Kotupati Bhattacharya, and it was, it was performed as Tadosh Rajuni, Julius Caesar by Jyotindranath Tagore, and Romeo and Juliet by Dotto himself, A Midsummer Night's Dream, again by Dotto himself, as Choitali Rati Shopno. But above all, himself, Utpal Dotto preferred Timon of Athens. A unique kind of play, Atke Shah Jahan by Utpal Dotto, is about a veteran Shakespeare actor who loves Shakespeare's plays with all his heart and is heartbroken for the loss of interest in the performance of Shakespeare's plays by both performers and audience. A word must be put in for the production of Julius Caesar, as Madame has pointed out. It was a historic performance with characters in modern dress and a direct reference to the global scenario at that time, apart from the use of the radio for the first time as an interesting device. We then come to Shekhar Chattopadhyay, who was well known for his Shakespearean roles. He began his theatrical career with the IPTA and he moved on to the LTG and then to theatre workshop and his own group, Theatre Unit. His adaptation of The Taming of the Shrew as Srimoti Bhayankori in 1980 was a very, very successful play. Vibhash Babu, Vibhash Chakravorty, directed Hamlet. He has tried to tamper with the text as little as possible, as he disclosed in an interview with Dr. Paramita Chakravorty and Urunabo Banerjee. He says he had begun with Samsur Rahman's translation of the text. But later on, he shifted to Shokti Bishash's translation, a lesser known one, which he could edit as required without much discomfiture. He says, one has to remember always that one is putting up a stage for the contemporary audience. Yes, the text is a classic, but you cannot let that dictate how your production will be. So gradually, this shift is becoming more and more obvious. He is attracted to Shakespeare because the genius of Shakespeare lies in the fact that he has not left any theme untouched. First part of his Hamlet has a contemporary reference which does not return in the play. This, according to Chakraborty, dissatisfied two other thespians, Koshik Shen and Shumon Mukhopadhyay, who had come to see the play. 
Bratva Boshu, working with someone else's text is very different from working with one's own, is what he thinks. He said this in the Kolkata Literary Fest panel discussion in 2016, where Anjan Dutta was also present. Boshu thinks that a person is the fruit of his own time. So, Twelfth Night becomes Mumbai Nights, written by Debashish Roy, directed by Boshu, is a mixture of Shakespeare's play with Bollywood and Pulp Fiction. Duke Orsino becomes the celebrated film producer Arishan Kulkarni, while Viola and Sebastian are Huma and Ashgar, respectively, Pakistani students separated by the Mumbai blasts. Ripples from the underworld course through the play. Olivia is Ushnata Kul Osmani, a ganglord sister, while Antonio Sebastian Savia is another Don's henchman. Elaborate stagecraft, cutouts of Amitav Bachchan and Rakesh Maria, live band on stage, actors descending from the heavens in a basket, all these form Mumbai Nights. Gautam Haldar as Tikka Ala, that is Malvolio in this play, is a star of the show. There is loud music and flamboyance throughout the performance. Boshu's Hemlat, Prince of Goran Hatta, is an adaptation of Hamlet. The language of Hemlat is that of the present times, and the milieu is the one we live in, complete with promoters, politicians, and owners of photocopying centers and STG booths. Boshu has said, few people in India realize the many possibilities of doing Shakespeare. So that was how he approached the bard. The producer of this play, Hemlat, Prince of Goranhata, Vijay Mukherjee, says he has learned the hard way that the amateurish style in which groups present theatre nowadays cannot survive. With a director, script and team of actors and technicians selected purely on the basis of merit and commitment, they stand a better chance of coming up with entertaining yet thought-provoking productions, which also cover a good part of the costs. According to the writer-director, the name Goranhata was not only chosen because it goes well with Hemlat, but because, I quote from him, I wanted to show the paradox of a local that encompasses the Nintala burning heart, the red light area, as well as the Jodashnako Takurbari. Ratha Boshu clearly refuses to confine himself within the limits of academic critical theories, which he believes cannot contain the interpretation of a performance, which has the inherent capacity to pierce through any academic theoretical confinement and emerge in its freedom of expression and interpretation. For him, the performance audience bonding is what matters. Shuman Mukhopadhyay has directed Coriolanus, but it is the play by Brecht. He came to Shakespeare's play via Raja Lear, and in the Kolkata Literary Fest panel discussion, Shomitra Chattopadhyay, who played Lear, as we all know, shared his thoughts with the listeners. He said he wanted to do Hamlet, when he was very young and had even written a script in Bengali. But the play never happened and he grew older. His intense desire to do a Shakespeare play never left him. So he began to consider plays in which he could fit into the lead role and he stopped at India. Shuman Mukhopadhyay directed the play. The text used was the translation by Shunil Chattopadhyay. Leah's speeches were later altered by Shomitra Chattopadhyay himself. The rest is common knowledge. Chono Chen directed Caesar based on Julius Caesar. For him, writing a play text is the most difficult compared to direction and acting. The script ought to be such that whoever reads it will be eager to perform it too. He says he has learned a lot from Uttal Dotto and Rama Prashad Boni. He describes Utpal Dotto as the Himalayas. In his opinion, Shakespeare is still alive because he unravels what goes on in the human mind. Personally, he loves acting 
more than script writing or directing. In fact, actor Gautam Handar says the same thing in another context. We now come to Koshik Shane's version of Macbeth. As text, he has possibly used his own translation with some parts from the text Shomik Babu spoke about. Bandhapadhyay's views on this production are like this, and I quote from Shomik Bandhapadhyay: "Too much of spectacle, and trying to lift everything up to the level of the spectacle, nothing else. There was no other attitude, no interpretative treatment. I found nothing of that. Almost as if the spectacle was caught up first, and then trying to pull everything up to that point. One couldn't even hear or make out what was being said. The whole thing is about language and interpretation of language." What they did was that they converted the verse to prose. Dr. Triodotto has done Twelfth Night as Iliria Rath, and it was directed by Dotto and Amita Burai for Theater Arts Workshop. He later revised the text and renamed it Ichetitil Golpo. He also wrote Macbeth Mirror, an adaptation of Macbeth. And the play text was prepared by him and Shantanu Dotto. Dotto, Shantanu Dotto directing the production for Kollani Kalamandalam. We now come to Avanti Chakraborty, who has directed A Midsummer Night's Dream, initially using Choitali Rati Shopno as the text. But as the rehearsals advanced, she made required alterations for the final production. Tunarash, who acted in the role of Helena, has mentioned in a telephone discussion with me that several alterations became inevitable. There is a mental pressure while performing in a classical role, and precedents make matters even more nail-biting. To encounter this challenge of friendship with the character one is playing is immediately struck. This creates space for the possibility of a satisfactory performance. But the audience will compare and contrast. That is the challenge. But the actor doesn't have much control over this. The possibility of rejection looms large over a performance. Dr. Torun Kumar Pradhan directed an adaptation of A Midsummer Night's Dream as Phagun Ratir Gokpo. This production by the Robindra Bharati repertory has been selected for performance at the Zanx Shakespeare Festival, Poland this year. Here again, Dotto's Choitali Rati Shopno is the takeoff point. But since a lot of folk theatrical elements like Gombira, Rai Beshe, and Patanach have been used, and a matching dialectical interference needed to be incorporated and blended, the text required modifications, which were made by Shomitra Basu. And finally, it resulted in a deconstruction of Dotto's text. The music for this production is primarily by Shubhajit Kuho and Onirban Bhattacharya. Orna Mukhopadhyay has recently directed Otway based on Othello. We expect him to speak about this production by Natodha this evening, so I shall not say much about Otway. In conclusion, it may be said that Shakespeare's show will go on because it is inevitable in translations or transcreations aspiring to catch the dagger by the hilt, in adaptations inspired by the total theatrical sense of the great man of the theater, who combined exceptional talent with a keen sense of the commercial for theatrical productions. Shakespeare will not write any more plays. He is no more. But what he has written will live as long as men can breathe or eyes can see. His irresistible texts shall draw playwrights, actors, audiences. Excuse me. There will be more adaptations, experiments, breaking and rebuilding, which Shakespeare himself, <coughs> excuse me, bearing the torch for the recreations. These are the challenges which invite possibilities of Shakespeare productions in Bengali theatre. The pile of his texts is limited, criticism on them abundant. Performance texts dispersing in various amazing, pleasant directions across space and time shall make another pile grow higher and higher 
with Bengali theatre forgetting the partition, making a remarkable contribution to it. I shall end with a reference to Shomik Bandhavadhyay's words. He has said, I quote from him, In terms of theatre and films, I find Shakespeare open to such rich interpretation and such wonderful work. It's still worthwhile going back to for the purposes of performing and filming. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, for such an engrossing and illuminating talk. Uh, because of the constraint of time, uh, we shall uh, take a couple of questions, uh, and I shall present the questions on the screen. To what extent can an Indian director take liberty to a stage Shakespearean play in Indian cities to make the locals understand the crux of the play? Uh, that again will um, call for a long talk on uh, the vernacular in other parts of the country, and it has been much discussed. But uh, as I have uh, uh, spoken to a few persons, including regarding uh, performance in a language which uh, he doesn't understand, he has always focused on the total impact of the performance. So if liberties are taken, again, the total effect of the play on the audience must be taken into consideration and then the play will be successful wherever it is performed in other parts of India or outside. Okay, thank you ma'am. Uh, uh, there is another question which is not completely directed or completely related to your talk, um, but uh, I think you will be kind enough to answer this one also. I shall give it a try. Was there any nationalist idea presented or posed in Shakespeare adaptation in the colonial Bengal? Uh, of course there was, particularly in the history plays, which I referred to uh, very briefly. The nationalist idea was certainly there because they were trying, these playwrights were trying to uh, put up performances which were actually questioning the uh, British occupation in India, particularly in the early part of the 20th century. So they were putting up a kind of resistance to uh, the colonial presence in Bengal. Yes. Okay, thank you, ma'am, for uh, joining this webinar. Uh, we are you. really grateful to you. And uh, we shall now move okay. to our final uh, speaker. Uh, hmm. uh, the next so, and final I... speaker for this uh, morning session. Okay, okay, so you, you carry okay. on. Thank you, ma'am, for this illuminating session. Uh, now it's my privilege to introduce Dr. Shomipendra Banerjee, uh, who is very familiar to all of us. We all know him very well, but for the sake of formality, I have to introduce him. Dr. Shomipendra Banerjee is an assistant professor at the Department of English, University of Gaurbongo. He has been teaching English literature at the postgraduate level for over 15 years. He has completed his MPhil from Jadavpur University and PhD from Vishwavarti Santiniketan on historiography and politics of post-independence Indian English drama. He is an active member of theater community of Malda. He leads the drama club of University of Gaurbongo and acts and directs plays with his students. These include Brecht Galileo, Shonar Shantra Shaptok, and adaptation of Kyril Churchill's Seven Jewish Children in 2018 and 19. He received an international travel grant to present his research at the IFTR conference at University of Sao Paulo, Brazil in 2017. In 2019, he completed the prestigious course from the National School of Drama, New Delhi. He is on the editorial board of several peer-reviewed journals. His areas of interest are modern Indian theater, 19th century Bengali theater, and gender studies. So now may I request, uh, sir, to uh, continue your lecture. OK, sir, to begin your lecture. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Uh, 
thank you, Shobhan. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to express my sincerest gratitude uh, to uh, Shahotal Bidro, Shardu Shodavashi Ki Mohabidha here, uh, along with uh, such stalwarts of uh, theater scholarship in India, uh, particularly Professor Vishnu Priya Dutt, uh, Professor Obhijit Shen, who has been my PhD supervisor at Vishwabharati, and uh, Dr. Jolly Das, who has been uh, such a wonderful uh, uh, elder sister uh, to me. Uh, it was really wonderful to be uh, to be here and to listen to all these stalwarts. Uh, uh, my thanks uh, to uh, the Department of English, uh, Shobhan and Oru Babu particular, my friends uh, at the Department of English and uh, the principal of the college as well. Uh, so thank you very much for allowing me to speak here. Uh, well, uh, today I the title of my presentation would be uh, Macbeth in Bengal, the afterlives in the colony. So uh, basically uh, a lot has already been said uh, and I won't be adding uh, much new to it. And uh, but, but I would specifically talk of Macbeth only uh, in, in the context of the 19th century. So that is the, and I would also like to mention uh, Professor Shawani Choudhury to whom I dedicate this uh, lecture. Professor Shorbani Choudhury had been uh, my teacher at Kolani University when I was uh, an, a master's student there. And the reason for my dedication is that Professor Shorbani Choudhury was actually working uh, in this area uh, of the Shakespeare reception in Bengal, particularly uh, with, with such diligence. And it was, it was only later on, it was only uh, in 2016 that she un untimely passed away. Uh, putting an end to the kind of work that she was doing. So, so this is a, a kind of a dedication to, to her uh, work as well, because I will be drawing heavily from uh, what she has done. Now, uh, the 19th century Bengal has several confluences in terms of theater. Firstly, uh, an academic engagement with Shakespeare through English education. Secondly, English theater in Calcutta. And thirdly, an emerging urban theater of the Bengali Babus. Now, when I'm saying these three phases, I'm basically covering a, a range of, say, uh, the late 18th century on to the early part of the 20th century. Now, Dr. Jolly Das has just spoke, uh, spoken about the 20th century examples wonderfully. She has talked about starting from Choitali Rate Shopno to Fagun Rate Goppo. Uh, incidentally, when I was uh, in Malda, Fagun Rater Goppo uh, came over to Malda and it was such a wonderful production. So what I am planning to do, I am trying to go back to the 19th century. Again, something that uh, my sir Obhijitda has already dealt with to a certain extent. But I will be focusing, as I told you, on uh, Macbeth. So, so these, uh, you know, the time basically is a long uh, space of time and the interactions of Bengal with Shakespeare had begun quite early, starting from, say, uh, De Rosio and the Hindu college students performing snippets of the plays. And of course, the English theater in Calcutta as well. So all these things I will come back to. So these interactions basically create a contingent atmosphere where, uh, you know, not only is colonial hegemony being questioned, but also a native Hindu identity is also being highlighted as a prelude to a kind of a Hindu nationalism. So that would be a kind of a focus here because that is what the Macbeth adaptations or translations tell us. Now, moreover, these interactions are posited within uh, certain disturbing events of the, uh, of the period that again range across several years. Uh, the first war of independence, the Sepoy Mutiny of 1857, for example, the Dramatic Performances Act or the first censorship of theater in 1876, and the censorship of the press in 1878. Now, the British had introduced the last two measures, that is the Dramatic Performances Act and the censorship of the press, in order to curb the anti, the rising anti-colonial, uh, you know, strain in the plays in the theatres of Bengal, which was, of course, spearheaded by Neil Dorpo. Now, this complexity uh, is, is part of a larger debate within which the reception of Shakespeare was happening in India. Now, this is where I would like to quote from Shukanto Choudhury, who in his essay, Shakespeare in India, has to say that the Shakespearean presence in India 
is older and more complex than in any other country outside the West. That is owing to India's long colonial history and the presence of unusually receptive elements in the mother culture. The local culture of most states or regions could absorb Shakespeare within its inherent structure and in turn be reshaped and inseminated by Shakespearean influence." Unquote. Now, in his essay, Choudhury, what he does is he moves on to trace uh, the variety of reception of Shakespeare in a pan-Indian context. But I would restrict myself to Bengal um, in the 19th century. But even then, the engagement with Shakespeare is quite complex. Uh, in Bengal, much of this discourse is about translation and adaptation or also appropriation that Professor Obhijit Chen has already reflected between the Bengali words in particularly Onubad and Onukoron. Uh, in my uh, in my you know del uh, delivery here, I would also be using uh, certain Bengali expressions because otherwise we won't be able to uh, understand the way the translation was proceeding. Now, this this conflict between the Onubad and the Onukoron was was because the task of the earliest translators was largely to homogenize Shakespeare and Shakespearean original for an upper class Hindu audience. Now. Shishir Kumar Dash in his Indian Ode to the West Wind, he is uh, raising another issue, the unfamiliarity of uh, the Bengali audience, of this audience that I'm talking of, with uh, the idea of the tragedy. Shishir Kumar Dash says the translation of tragedies had to negotiate more with conceptual rather than linguistic problems. The important issue is that the Indian mind, the Hindu mind to be more precise, was unfamiliar with tragedy as a form of literature and was not yet prepared to appreciate it fully. Another interesting point is made in 1887, around 1887, by Okoye in Novojibon, where he says that, I quote, we have heard of Lord Rama's unfair killing of Bali, the killing of the boy Abhimanyu, and he goes on to give other examples uh, from our epics, but we do not find such an outrageously sinful murderer as Macbeth. So, you see how these different responses are being generated. So the Shakespeare canon had to uh, negotiate with an alien culture, a culture that was not familiar with Shakespearean tragedy, or even for that matter, witches as evil, as symbols of evil. You know, it is in this context that I would like to take a look at uh, two or three translations of Macbeth. The first one is uh, Horolal Roy's Rudrapal, which Ubijidda briefly mentioned. Uh, it is the earliest extant adaptation of Macbeth um, and is often branded as an English romance by the Indian Daily News of 4th November 1873. We are not very sure about its production, but it, it was probably produced uh, in the Great National Theatre. But uh, you see, this, this labeling is an effort to look at it from certain more familiar grounds. And, and by that time, familiar was being English. Okay. And so there is a, there is a, there is a complexity, there's a debate, there's a, there's a kind of an antagonism between uh, what do we exactly understand by uh, what is familiar. Kali Prashanna Ghosh was actually championing the play's ethical and moral aspects, labeling Shakespeare as a uh, as, as, a, as an author, as a preacher with a certain kind of conscience, providing just punishment for the villain. On the other hand, there is another interesting uh, comment by Purno Chandra Bosu, uh, which is on the other extreme. And this is something that I would like to uh, uh, read up uh, more closely, which is seen as a crude and but faithful manifestation of the savage, aggressive nature of the Europeans. And Macbeth as a graphic illustration of this trait. According to Bose, the greatest English writer's tragedy is an authentic proof of the habitual brutality of the British encountered daily by the colonized. I'm quoting here from uh, Puno Chandra Bosu. Macbeth uh, in Bengali, Macbeth aro grinito vapor. Macbeth er shorbotro hotta, tahar gorae hotta, tahar modde hotta, tahar sheshe hotta. Nato ke er praye shomudoy, koshai khana. Modde modde jokon Lady Macbeth udoy hoya bolichen, Amar Rokto Hosto Jekichute Skolito Huitechena, Tokunjano She, Oshaikana, Aro Dedipoman Huitetak. So this is Purno Chandra Bosu. Uh, 
So you see, Purnachandra Bosu's perspective on Macbeth indicates the plurality of interpretive possibilities and his specific anti-colonial stance indicates the rising popularity of Macbeth with the Bengali theater. Now, this is something that is also very interesting because Macbeth was gradually becoming popular with the emerging Bengali theater. That could be because of this anti-colonial uh, you know, element that was that could be identified with Macbeth. Shorbani Choudhury writes here, I quote, one reason for Macbeth's popularity during the early phase is that it is only one among the four great tragedies which makes out adequate retribution for evil deeds. Unquote. So, you know, something that um, finds a parallel with the Indian version of karma and a retributive justice. Now, this leads me to wonder that if, if could it be like that Purnachandra Bosch's argument uh, be also one of the reasons why there is little or no mention of Macbeth or a performance of Macbeth in the English theatres of colonial Calcutta. Now, there were some questions that had also come up in the earlier session regarding the colonial uh, you know, theatre of Calcutta. I have been slightly interested in the early 19th century English theatres of Calcutta. And uh, what I have seen is that whatever uh, I have gone through that, that period, it was essentially, uh, we must remember that it was essentially a British space. But, um, and, and it, was, it was those English theatres of Calcutta that introduced Shakespeare to Bengal. But whether it is the old playhouse or the new playhouse, the Chorongi theatre of Mrs. Emma Bristow or the Sasuchi of uh, Mrs. Esther Leach, there are uh, very, uh, there are a number of references of staging Julius Caesar, the Merchant of Venice, um, Hamlet, etc. In particularly, Othello seems to be a favourite. But there is no reference uh, to any staging of Macbeth. I, uh, this, I, I find this quite strange given the popularity of Shakespeare. But uh, could it be because of the later identification of the anti-colonial streak within Macbeth? Um, now, if we return to the history uh, briefly, then the first instance of staging Shakespeare in Bengal, in Bengali, that is, was in the private theater of Bengal. Uh, Babu Prashanda Kumar Tagore's Hindu Theatre 1831, which inaugurated with the fifth act. Remember, the fifth act of Julius Caesar, not the whole play. The next private performance of Shakespeare's play was quite long after, uh, as Prabhavati, which was an adaptation of The Merchant of Venice, uh, at the Biniatola residence of Kartik Chandra Watanjo in 1870. Now, the early Bengali efforts thus follow the early British stagings, but gradually, with a greater exposure to Shakespeare, translations, adaptations, indigenizations, and appropriations begin that brilliantly opens up Shakespearean texts to new interpretive possibilities. Now, this is where I go to the second text. And one of the most famous texts during this time was Nogendranath Bosch's Kornobir. Kornobir was an adaptation or a translation of Macbeth. I will talk about uh, uh, Kornobir briefly. This was uh, this is dated around 1884 or 1885, but there is no um, information about its performance. Probably it was not not staged ever. Uh, <clears throat> now, what Kornobi does is that it transcreates the tragedy of self-destructive ambition into a fictional historical narrative of national calamity under a foreign rule. The battle between Norway and Scotland is converted into a combat between Jogon Raj and Joypur Raj. So, you know, Joypur is the, the major locale of, of this particular play, as in uh, Jaipur of Rajasthan, adding a religious angle to the political conflict. Now, this is what I found very interesting with both Rudrapal and Kornobi, was this not only religious, but also a rather communal angle to the conflict. Uh, because you see, the use of the word Jobon uh, is a derogatory epithet used by Hindus to designate pagan Muslims. Norway is therefore aligned immediately with the wrongful aggressor. And England becomes more hard time. English king is Mahatta Shibji. And the moment you, you call the English king Mahatta Shibji, uh, there's a clear indication with uh, or a reference to uh, Shivaji, and which aligns with his anti-Muslim crusades. 
Now, Duncan is Anand Singh, the king of Jaipur, while Kornobir and Vijay Chandra are Macbeth and Banco, respectively. What the play does is that it, it is that it binarizes good and evil into Hindu and Muslim, respectively. Now, this is where also uh, Sharwani Choudhury has to comment that such identification parallels the post-1857 British categorization of rascally Muslims as inherently bigoted, treacherous, anti-progressive, and as prime in instigators of the rebellion, and feeds the colonial regime's divisive tactics by fostering a self-emaciating internal otherization. It is also interesting to note here that Kornobir follows Horolal Roy's Rudrapal in retaining the phrase Jobon, because both these plays were retaining the phrase Jobon as identifying with the Norwegian invaders and was being recontextualized as the Muslim heathens who threatened the Hindu way of life. As Obishek Sharkar also rightly points out, the use of the term Javan implicitly but efficiently taps the nostalgic myth of a glorious Hindu past which has been corrupted by the inroads of the Muslim and British colonizers. So, um, so the so Bose's Nogendra Bose's play, interestingly, is not the tragedy of Kornobir, rather, <coughs> it is the conflict between Adharmo and Dharmo, and the ultimate triumph of Dharmo over evil with the defeat of Kornobir. Now, very interestingly, uh, uh, the, the way the witches have been presented in Kornobir particularly, uh, this needs a little bit of an attention. The witches are reincarnated as Bhairavis here, completing the Hinduization of the text. Uh, while the witches in Macbeth are located outside the Christian world. Now, the, the witches in Macbeth are identified unequivoc unequivocally with evil. So it, it, it is outside the... the the ethos of the Christian world, but for a polyvalent, you know, culture, Hindu culture, this wasn't uh, as simple. And what 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 uh, Kornobi does, and even Rudrapal had done, was uh, relocate the uh, the teachers in the context within the context of a Hindu culture, although albeit uh, certain distance. So the so the identification is. Uh, is, is with the tantric sphere of Hinduism. Um, the Hindu religion uh, would, would therefore accommodate goddess, goddess and the associated tantric cult within its seamless bounds, uh, thereby legitimizing the obscure yet, yet potent occult practices that, that uh, also parallels black magic. Hekat uh, is seen as Kal Bhairavi, the, the chief uh, Bhairavi. It is also interesting that, now this is where uh, we need to give a, a kind of a thought because uh, Nogendrona Bosch, almost as an afterthought, apologized for his use of Bhairavi rather than Dakini. Now, in, in his preface or Mukhobondo to his play, Nogendrona Bosch remarked that while translating as mistakenly written Bhairavi in place of Dakini, whereas Dakini should have been the proper Bengali word from which Dakini is deri uh, de uh, you know, derived. Uh, for this rather strange apology might never be known, but this certainly problematizes the whole question of textuality and meaning in Bose's version. So the overarching Hindu framework is evident in the work that moves beyond literary translation into allusions and symbols, uh, into a process of acculturation in, and indigenization rather than a literal transposition. Now, Bose himself had referred to his adaptation as a translation which it is not actually, justifying his change of the original only to the extent of the naming. Now, Nogendranath Bosch says, Bangla Ingraji Nam Bhalo Shunayana
uh, we seem to have lost Sir, the I think, uh, so network many connection, yes, uh, connection of Dr. Bhupendra Banerjee. Uh, in the meantime, I also make an announcement uh, to all the participants. Uh, some of the participants are also saying that the feedback link is not working. Uh, so we will be uh, making the necessary rectifications and we will get adequate time to fill up the uh, feedback link. And if uh, there is any necessity, we shall also provide the feedback link to the Telegram and the WhatsApp group. So you need not worry uh, for the feedback link. We are working and we shall make the necessary corrections. So uh, we shall wait uh, for the for some time to Dr. Shankendra Banerjee to join the session. So I request all the participants to kindly wait uh, till Dr. Banerjee rejoins us. Thank you. So, can you hear me? Yes, sir. You are audible uh, now. So, uh, am I audible now? Right. Yes, yes, uh, so, you apologies uh, for this technical. Uh, you know, the my power. Suddenly uh, went off. No, fine, fine. So uh, I'm sorry for this little. Uh, I'm sorry for this little. Uh, you know, uh, break. I'm just just coming back uh, quickly, trying to come back.
So, so yes, uh, I was, I was, uh, uh, and I was speaking of uh, the first production of Girish Chandra Ghosh's Macbeth took place in 1893 uh, in the Minerva Theatre. Is this? Uh, so I hope I am audible and visible. Uh, properly. No, and I was pointing out that this this was unique and this was special because Girish Chandra Ghosh's Macbeth was tailor made for uh, the commercial Bengali public stage, and this was the first time that a Shakespearean a Shakespearean play had been used for the had been used commercial, right? So it had its own politics that were significantly different from. Uh, the kind of politics that Rudrapal and Pornobir had used. And uh, I was also referring to the Englishman, which had said that the manager played the part of Macbeth and the play as a whole was very well rendered. And then comes uh, what Obijita had also referred to, the Bengali Thane of Kodar is a living suggestion of incongruity. But anyway, uh, this is where I also went over to Utpal Dotto. Utpal Dotto uh, had, had spoke about Girish Ghosh and uh, Utpal Dotto had, had written at length about Girish Ghosh's involvement with Shakespeare and his role uh, as, as a pioneering figure in bringing a, a, a proper authentic translation of Shakespeare for the Bengali stage. And I was quoting from Utpal Dotto. Uh, I don't know if uh, you had got it, but... Uh, <clears throat> But I'll just repeat it. He knew this audience expected to be overwhelmed by intensity of passion and a veritable turmoil of events on the stage. They had a right to wonder and awe in drama. And Girish's early apprenticeship in Shakespeare showed him the world's greatest dramatist was not averse to packing his plays with towering violence, with witches and ghosts, with duels and battles precisely to hold the attention of the apprentices who crowded into his theatre. On January 28, 1893, Girish opened his Macbeth in Bengali, a translation so brilliant that it has not been equaled yet. And with his usual fastidious care for detailed, detail, hired an stage designer of the city, Pim by name, to build the sets and make the costumes. Girish had a plan to translate all the tragedies of Shakespeare and produce them by and by. But, but the businessmen who owned the theatre were appalled at what they considered a reckless risk and unfortunately, Girish's feeling for Shakespeare's verse was never again used by the Bengali theatre. Um, Shukanto Choudhury says that in 1893 came a distinguished Macbeth by Girish Chandra Ghosh, the doyen of Bengali theatre, in his day, a masterpiece of poetic translation. It flopped on the stage. Uh, and uh, later on, a version of Hamlet, Hori Raj, by Novendranath Choudhury, was, however, well accepted uh, later on. Shishir Kumar Dash, in his essay, Shakespeare's Translations in Indian Languages, sees Girish's Macbeth as instantiating a compromise between the policy of Indianization propounded by Hem Chandra and that of a faithful translation advocated by the 20th century translators. Now, if we look at it, uh, if we look at Girish Ghosh's experiment from the perspective of theater, now, it, it failed on stage. Despite elaborate preparations, Girish's own eye for detail with concerted approaches to stage design, costume, painted backdrop, the play could not impress contemporary audiences. And again, as Obhijit remarked uh, a while ago, uh, within a few performances, the audiences could not be seen anymore on the, uh, in, the, in the theaters. Uh, but we must remember that this effort was pioneering and its various strands in the context of translation and adaptation for the stage and the attitude to Shakespeare awaits further analysis. Obishek Sharkar here notes that Girish's level-headed and comparatist approach to Shakespeare deters the presupposition that he would succumb to bardolatry without any cultural premeditation of his own. That the Macbeth experiment failed was a great blow to Girish. And he later had lamented, and I'm quoting Girish Ghosh, Natok Dekhibar Joggota. Natok Dekhibar Joggota Labhe, Ihader Akono Bohu Botshor Lagibe, Bujibar Shadaron Dorshok, Akono Rongaloe Toyari Hoenai. Peshaitare 
থিয়েটার প্রতিষ্ঠানে আমার যে আপত্তি ছিল তাও তাহার একটি কারণ so with this uh, i would conclude with this remark by girish chandra ghosh i would conclude um, the the the, the uh, this this brief talk but you can see you can understand the the pain that girish chandra ghosh went through when his uh, experiment with macbeth which has later been uh, championed by critics as a wonderful translation but it failed in the commercial enterprise girish was far sighted and he quickly changed his course and started doing uh, uh, lesser lesser plays and they uh, became successful before doing macbeth girish was already uh, a well established theater practitioner an actor a manager and was was you know having uh, moving through meandering through the multiple roles in the theater so um what i tried to show here briefly uh, despite these interruptions uh, was rudrapal kornobir and girish chandra ghosh's macbeth as three examples of macbeth adaptation and adaptation uh, within the context of the 19th century and how different and how differently they were reacting to the bard thank you very much sir thank you very much sir for this engrossing and captivating speech um, it is as usual very much delightful to listen to your talk and we have uh, some interesting questions and i will take some of these questions um, and i will put the questions uh, directly on the screen okay so i will take uh, a few seconds কিছু বলছে রে ইয়া এম আই অডিবল স্যার ওকে ওকে সো ইউ ক্যান কাইন্ডলি অ্যানসার সাম অফ দিস क्वेश्चंस yes yes uh there are uh, network issues uh, that are there anyway is there any barrier in dramatizing shakespeare in uh, dialectical language <coughs> yes 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 i can hear you yeah we can say hear you uh, will you elaborate yeah, i i am i am trying to answer the question uh, okay uh well yes i mean theater uses uh, a dialectical language to a great extent but i won't uh, say that when it comes to a uh, dialectical language in particular there would be no i was uh, i was trying to say that uh, when it when it comes to shakespeare uh, dialectical language is not a barrier it's not a problem of course i mean shakespeare see any uh, if you go to any play writing course then uh, the first thing that uh, is being taught is to play right would be able to raise issues from two different perspectives so that uh, a, a dialogue can be initiated master in in being able to do that so the shakespearean play text uh, already has uh, the dialectical approach within it so that
উৎপল দত্ত ইস স্পিকিং অফ গিরিশ চন্দ্র ঘোষ উৎপল দত্ত ইস অ্যাকচুয়ালি লুকিং এট গিরিশ অ্যাজ সামওয়ান who is uh, merging or or, uh, or or creating a bridge between jatra public theater of uh, the urban public theater of bengal and which is why utpal dotto appreciates uh, girish to a great extent and uh, much of girish's plays oh i forgot to mention was the inclusion of songs and dances uh, in uh, girish's macbeth so much of these were uh, uh, part of the uh, the the jatra motif onto the uh, the public stage and uh, sir professor obhijit chen wants to uh, make a comment can we please take that uh, uh, could i come in there am i audible okay uh, about these two questions one uh, uh, particularly the jatra one if i talk about that first yes there were many plays of shakespeare in jatra for that matter utpal dot to himself did macbeth also as jatra he did take macbeth to the ordinary masses through jatra that is very much there i also remember another jatra of hamlet where lolita chatterjee in fact played um, gertrude therefore jatra and for that matter utpal dot to did think this was this is something that he was firmly convinced about that if shakespeare was a dramatist of the masses of the popular people the jatra would be the medium to actually present him Uh, i'm sure uh, bishupriya would want to come in on that also but uh, just to refer to the other question about using dialects in plays uh, may i may i just refer to my experience of doing a midsummer night's dream with our students where we were finding tremendous difficulties with one group of students Uh, who came from the local areas and were not able to master the proper pronunciation in english and therefore what we ultimately did was we had three sets of language used in the same production so the uh, bottom and his company were actually using the birbhum language and using that local color to speak which gave them a sense of comfort as actors and which gave a certain degree of quote and could difference of class and position of the mechanicals as opposed to the royals in the play uh, so that is what i i had to offer there can i come in please, please do please do um uh just directly for the jatra like for a jatra company i know um uh, uh, utpal dot uh, had um, sort of adapted romeo and juliet called bhuli nai priya for uh, mohan opera and it ran quite well other than that he never adapted a jatra and uh, of course you know they had done macbeth i think that's what obhijit da was trying to say for the ipta which you know was supposed to be when ipta was still doing a lot of grassroots work but there is a debate about it. a lot of people say that rithik ghatak directed it and not baba but my mother insisted who played lady macbeth that it was baba so there's a, a controversy about it and um yeah so let's keep it as a debate so this is i think um his uh, a in the jatra how much he's done Oh, 
also put in one uh, more question and this question is open for all of you to answer okay. it will be directed to uh, dr banerjee but presently uh, i think uh, dr banerjee has lost the network and uh, lost the connection so sir or madam you can kindly reply to this question Dr. Banerjee has lost the connection. So if uh, sir or madam can give a reply to this question. Uh, as I had tried to uh, say in my bit of presentation, while Girish Kosh was being very, very faithful to the original, Girish Kosh also was bringing in some amount of local color. And therefore, those songs and dances, uh, particularly associated with the Bhairavis, which uh, were br being brought in was something that was in keeping with the contemporary practices in uh, Bangla theatre. Uh, one interesting point which this question is bringing to my mind is, um, uh, you know, when part to conventions, but these these. Um, songs that were being brought in was very much like the songs of uh, Bibek or that kind of intrusion as commentary pieces that you often had again in Jatra. And Girish Kosh remembered that this was happening in Bangla theatre of the time and he was probably trying to infuse that into his translation of Macbeth also. Uh, I'm sure Shomi Pindra could add to that but Unfortunately, uh, can I add something to yes, that? Please, please. Uh, I don't know because I, I think the question is really bringing to my mind, um, you know, when Partha Chatterjee looks at uh, Girish Ghosh's Siraj and Siraj Dola, and he puts it under the frame of the popular national culture. So um, even if he, you know, takes Macbeth for the professional stage, I think it's interesting to see, you know, how he uses music and songs would actually then allow him to compartmentalize without you know each one playing to the other i think that could be an interesting way to uh, look at your question uh, absolutely. professor banerjee is back with us and if professor banerjee could also give his views uh, on this one Um, I don't think that uh, second uh, Sir does have a, a, a network issue. So well, we come to the okay. Sir is not bad. But this question is uh, directed to you. If you can kindly give your thoughts on this one. Okay, I feel that uh, Professor Banerjee has a little problem. So we come to the almost end of this session. It has been uh, such uh, an engrossing and captivating session for the organizers and participants. And uh, I shall ask my colleague, the convener of this webinar, uh, Shogun Maiti, to give the vote of thanks to the speakers. Shobhan, over to you. Shobhan. Whoever is supposed to speak is using connections. Uh, am I audible, sir? OK. Am I audible, Shobhan, sir? Not <laughs> yeah, you are. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Honorable principal of our college and the chairman of this international webinar, Dr. Montu Kumar Dat, distinguished keynote speaker, Professor Vishnu Priya Dat, Professor, School of Arts and Aesthetics, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, respected guest of honor, Professor Obhijit Sen, Professor, Department of English and other modern European languages, Vishwabharati West Bengal, 
Honorable invited speaker, Dr. Jolly Das, Associate Professor and Head, Department of English, Vidyasagar University, West Bengal. Esteemed invited speaker, Dr. Sumipendra Banerjee, Assistant Professor of English, University of Gaurbongo, West Bengal, and my dear participants. I feel immense pleasure to take this opportunity to propose the vote of thanks on behalf of the organizing committee of this webinar. We want to express our sincere gratitude to the distinguished keynote speaker, Professor Vishnupya Dath, who spared her precious time for us and graced this webinar with her erudite presentation, where she insightfully recounts the critical historiography of the theatrical representation of Shakespeare in India in general and Bengal in particular. She would also like to understand how the artists and activists of She would yeah, also like to understand there. how the artists and activists of Yes, am I audible, sir? Yes, Shobhan, you are. Shobhan, you are. And what Shakespeare meant for new nation and the regional imagination. I would like to convey our deep regards to veteran professor Ovijit Sen for his fascinating and engaging oration on different manifestations of Shakespeare in 19th century Bengali theater. He had discussed about Horachandra and Girish Chandra Ghosh's commendable attempts to make Shakespeare a contemporary to the Bengali audience. My profuse, my profuse gratitude also goes to Dr. Jolly Das for her engrossing and mesmerizing speech on 20th and 21st century stage performances of Shakespeare on Bengal stage, where the notable directors has presented the same Shakespearean play by adopting different theatrical forms and techniques. Our special thanks goes to respected Dr. Somipendra Banerjee for his insightful talk on Macbeth in Bengal. where he has highlighted how colonial hegemony is questioned time and again in different theatrical adaptations and manifestations of Macbeth on Bengali stage. He is pointing out of witches as Bhairavij or Dakinis. It is very interesting as it indicates the tantric culture of Hinduism. We are deeply indebted to the Honorable President of our governing body, Sri Srikanta Mahato, MLA Salvoli constituency, and other members of this governing body of our college for their unfaltering supports and encouragements. I extend our sincere thanks to our respected and beloved principal, Dr. Montu Kumar Das, for delivering the welcome address and for being the backbone of It would be injustice if I don't convey my hearty thanks to Professor Arubratan Chakraborty, head of our department, for his tireless efforts and undefeated energy behind this webinar. I salute to you, sir. My sincere gratitude also goes to the organizing committee for their dedication, contribution, and technical assistance to materialize this program. Last but sure, not the least, my deep sense of appreciation and thanks go to the all, all the participants including respected teachers colleagues friends and across the globe who chose to be live with us with their enthusiasm and make this webinar a grand success thank you all we want to see you again in our evening session have a nice and safe day thank you shobhan and we have a wonderful morning session today and it was an enriching experience for all of us, for the organizers and for all the participants. So may I now announce the uh, closing of the opening of the morning session of this webinar. Uh, we shall meet again at 7.30 in the evening. And in that session, we have four speakers, uh, Ms. Esha Yusuf, 
of Bangladesh Theatre. She is from Dhaka, Bangladesh. And then we have a panel discussion by three uh, Bengali directors, well known faces uh, uh, Sri Chandan Shen, Dr. Turun Kumar Pradhan, and Sri Ornu Mukhopadhyay. So we shall meet again at 7 30. And uh, for the time being, I'm saying bye to you. Have a nice day. And we meet again in the evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thanks to you. Thank you, everybody. Okay.